Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to this five things Bray Wyatt needs to do now that he's back with WWE. I've had so many people getting in touch with me saying he needs to go after Roman. He needs to go after Goldberg. He needs to go after Alexa. He needs to go after Randy Orton. He needs a family. The puppets have got to come alive. Like there's just so much noise around at the moment as to what he needs to do. Um, I've actually sat down and written down the five things that I think he needs to do. And I've got to tell you, ending Roman's title reign did not make it, right? It didn't make it. I feel like that's a big thing. I've got a couple of concerns, though. My first concern is that it's very quick. Like, I, I think we need time to explore his new family, uh, I think we need time to understand this new character. Like, I feel like we need time. And I think him going straight after Roman just doesn't make sense to me right now. I kind of feel like that's a big story. And that's going to need time as well. So, yeah, th there's a lot to do, basically. So, time-wise, it's going to be a little tricky. And certainly if Roman is going to be facing The Rock at WrestleMania... Because you've got to think that's going to take up a lot of 2023. And we're already halfway through October. So, like, you know, it's it's going to be very difficult. But not impossible. We, we can find a way. The other problem, though, is I think Bray works better when he's the hunter and he's going after people and he's got targets and he can sneak up on them rather than when he's the hunted and people are coming after him because he's got something they want, and that is the title, right? So, uh, again, that's just a little bit of a concern as well. So I've got a few concerns. I'm certainly not saying that he shouldn't be the one, right? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's a few concerns there. And I do definitely think there's five things that he could focus on that would be even more important, even bigger than being the one that ends Roman's title reign. So with that being said, let's get straight to it. Now, first thing is he's got to improve his matches, right? I understand a lot of Bray fans are going to be watching this and they maybe don't want to hear this. This is not meant to offend anyone, right? This is not meant to upset anyone. This is just meant to be honest. And the honest truth is that you can read a lot of reviews online by various different companies and pretty much the same message keeps coming through. That is that Bray is creatively a genius. His characters are incredible. His vignettes are outstanding. His promo work is engaging. The cryptic clues are just, you know, have everyone buzzing. But his in-ring work is below par. His in-ring is not quite at the level that it needs to be. What I did was I had a look at every pay-per-view match that The Fiend and Funhouse Bray had. Uh, this was going from SummerSlam 2019 all the way through to WrestleMania 37 in 2021. That's actually, uh, I believe, 14 matches. It's 14 pay-per-views. And what I did was I looked at the Dave Meltzer star rating for every match. Now, I know that Dave Meltzer is not a fan of The Fiend, okay? But put that to one side, because if Dave Meltzer genuinely thought that The Fiend had a good match, he would give it a good score, and I can prove it, because one of these matches, the one that's on screen right now, yeah, from Royal Rumble 2020, that got four stars from Dave Meltzer. Dave Meltzer got that, gave that four stars. When these two faced each other at Survivor Series in 2019, that got three and a half stars. Not bad. Not bad at all. So good scores are possible from Dave Meltzer, but it's got to be the right creative. It's got to be the right opponent. And sometimes, you know, maybe it's Bray. Sometimes maybe like Bray and the mask and is a bit restrictive and, you know, the red light, I think, was annoying for a lot of people as well. Um, in fact, people that were colorblind, I'm told, really struggled to see what was even happening 
when the matches were in a red light. So, you know, there was lots of different factors, lots of different reasons that the matches were not quite to standard. And this is an area that has got to drastically improve. I looked at all the star ratings. I can tell you the average score, if you actually take all those scores and work out the average, the average pay-per-view Bray Wyatt score is 1.1 stars from Dave Meltzer out of five, 1.1, right? And obviously, there's some matches here that really hurt that, like the Hell in a Cell match against Seth. That really hurt it. Um, another one that really hurt it was the WrestleMania 37 match against Randy Orton. That actually got minus one star. So uh, that really hurt the average as well. But the average works out at 1.1. So I do understand, and I'm fully prepared for people saying, I can't believe we spoke about Dave Meltzer. He hates The Fiend. What did you expect? But we can't escape the fact that he gave The Fiend four stars for Royal Rumble. We can't escape the fact that he gave him three and a half stars for Survivor Series. We can't escape the fact that he will give decent scores if he feels the matches are decent. And he is not alone in that criticism. He is not alone, right? So for me, now that he's back, we know everything else is going to knock it out of the park. If there's one criticism, one thing that he needs to lift up, it's this. He's got to find a way of putting on more engaging, dramatic, uh, emotionally draining matches, matches that really take um, the WWE universe on a journey. And, uh, you know, we saw bangers between Sheamus and Gunther. This kind of brawling style that Bray has, it can lead to fantastic scores and fantastic matches. It's just got to be booked right. And listen, a good chunk of the reason as to why these matches underwhelmed absolutely could have been down to Vince and the booking of those matches. Well, guess what? Vince isn't there anymore. Triple H is in charge. And hopefully this improves. Next up, we have got, uh, this is quite a straightforward one, the Easter eggs. Yeah, the Easter eggs. People love the fun house. They love the hidden messages. They loved White Rabbit. They love the fact that Bray gives them something more than just watching a show. If you watch a Bray segment, chances are you can interact with it, be it a QR code, be it that you have to try and solve a mystery and go online and actually do some work and some research into things. Um, and so it's it's a level of interactivity that we just don't see from other wrestlers. And it's very clever and it's very successful as well. When I think of Bray, I think of cryptic clues, Easter eggs, little messages, you know, like all the puppets being named after specific things uh, was very clever. Uh, obviously, the fact that we had like the Mad Hatter and Alice in Wonderland, that seems to connect uh, to White Rabbit that would come years later. Look at the success of White Rabbit and like White Rabbit records and you could phone them up and they would tell you to let him in and all this kind of stuff. Like it's incredible, incredible the amount of work that went into all of this stuff. Well, hopefully now that he's back, that hopefully does not go away. We don't know if we're going to get a Firefly Funhouse anymore. We don't know. I mean, at the moment, nothing is seemingly pointing that we are. It seems like we're going to be getting a Wyatt family with Uncle uh, Howdy and Uncle Harper and uh, like, I don't know, there's nothing pointing towards a fun house. White Rabbit is over. So, you know, we can't take for granted like that we are going to get these Easter eggs and QR codes and all of that. I don't know that we are, but I hope we do. I think this is a really positive thing that Bray has got going for him. And it'd be such a shame to see that go now as we focus on, you know, whatever stories they want to tell. And uh, we don't like include QR codes and all of that. So hopefully that continues. I think that's been a massive success. And um, it's something that uh, I think he should carry on with. Next up, uh, this one, a movie. I think there should be a movie, right? I think that Rob Fee has come into WWE. Now, Rob Fee is their long-term creative director. So big, long stories that are going to be told. Rob Fee is going to be kind of overseeing that. 
This is important because Rob V once sent in uh, a pitch, an idea for a Fiend movie. This kind of implies that Rob V is going to be heavily involved with Bray. Rob V was also heavily involved with the White Rabbit stuff and the QR codes. So, you know, I feel like Bray's going to have some long-term stories. And that's going to be awesome. And that's exactly the right thing we should be doing with him. But I think the time is perfect now for a Fiend Bray Wyatt movie and for him to go off and do that. He's just been off and done a film, actually. But that was outside of the WWE world. So that's not going to be anything connected to Fiend and Sister Abigail or anything like that. I think that WWE could give him a movie. And I think it could hopefully really dig into. It doesn't have to go like super deep. But if we could just get some answers and connections, how did we get from Sister Abigail and a Wyatt family to a fun house to a fiend? How did we get like Alexa involved? And, you know, what was the man in the woods all about? And what was going on when he was in NXT and FCW? And what is that thread that connects this all? Because it feels like all of this is connected. And there's some really great videos on YouTube that does actually go back and connect them all. But I think an official film something that's actually put together by Bray, who knows all of this inside out because it's all come from his head. Um, if he was to put all of this together and it would come out as a film, that film would be massive. I mean, just think of like how popular that film would be amongst WWE fans. And I'd have to think like this character, the Fiend character in particular, is so cool that people love horror. I mean, this is going to really... Uh, grab people's attention and uh, you know if they can get this into cinemas around Halloween next year or something like that could be really interesting and that could really boost like his star power even further could make him an even bigger star and uh, I just think that this is really interesting it's also trailblazing because no one else has done this no one else has had a film that's explored their character like The Miz has done The Marine, but that's got nothing to do with The Miz character. The Miz character is Hollywood and an actor, right? That's how it connects. But the actual content of the movie does not connect to The Miz character. This could, this could, this could really give you some answers and it could really make some very interesting connections. It could have a ton of Easter eggs and things in there as well. Loads of talking points. Um, like people go into the cinema to watch as well. I think this would be awesome. And it feels like with Rob there now, the time is right for this. The time is right. It's I don't want to say now or never, but I don't know that there will ever be a better time for a Bray Wyatt movie. There are rumors of it. There's rumors doing the rounds that they could be looking at it. But um, yeah, that's why I've included it. I think that would be bigger than him just beating Roman for the title, because uh, undoubtedly he can have title reigns. But wow, will he ever get the opportunity to have like movies uh, within WWE? I, I really don't know, but it feels like the time is right. Moving forward, uh, obviously, it uh, looks like we're going to get a new Wyatt family. This is Dutch and Vincent, or Vincent and Dutch, whichever way you're looking at them. And um, yeah, it feels like they're coming in to join up with Bray. Now, um, this means he's got to get them over. We don't know anything about these guys. He's got to make them look good. They've got to be credible. I would actually say damage control has been a little bit wobbly. Um, I don't think the booking of damage control has been all that great, if I'm being super critical. I think that they've been all right. But, you know, seeing Bianca Belair beat up all three members of damage control on her own, was a bit underwhelming, to be honest. I thought when they first came in, they looked brilliant. Um, obviously, the two girls have gone on, Dakota and Io, to win the women's tag titles. Bailey just struggling to get past Bianca at the moment. But uh, I, think there's, I think there's a bit of work still to do with them. I think we need to make sure that this Wyatt family looks good, looks strong, looks credible, looks threatening. 
Um, and so we've got to make sure the booking is right. Uh, one of the ways that we did it last time was obviously we did a lot of attacks on people uh, with the original work family. But again, going back to a point I made earlier, we had some great matches. This was Wyatt family against the Shields. And th these matches are just regarded as some of the best. Like in recent years, they were absolutely fantastic. For example, this is an image from Elimination Chamber. Uh, this was 2014. And I can tell you that Dave Meltzer, yeah, who apparently hates Bray Wyatt, gave this 4.25 stars. 4.25 stars. That's only 0 0.25 below, I think, some of the big Undertaker matches uh, that he had at WrestleMania. Like, if once you get into that four star range, you're in a real special place. Um, and so, yeah, this getting 4.25. And the whole feud was brilliant. Many people look back on um, the Wyatts against the Shield with a lot of affection and great memories. This did a lot for them. And I think that something like this would really work So uh, for the new Wyatt family. So, hey, I'm not against Bloodline against uh, the new Wyatt family. Like, do that at Survivor Series. That would be fantastic. That would be fantastic. Um, and again, you know, if you want to have Bray ending the title reign of Roman around that time, then you could certainly do that. My only concern, I'm just going to go back to what I said at the start. I think we're trying to do a lot in a short space of time. And I think there could be a way of doing it, but it's oh, it's just got to be done. It's got to be done right. It's got to be done right. We do not have much time. It's actually not that far away till we get to Survivor Series. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to like be telling a few stories at the same time. We're gonna have to introduce people and build a feud with the bloodline at the same time, which is gonna be a bit tricky. But um it can be done. It can be done. But um yes, we've got to make this new family look good. He's gonna have to get over some young performers, some new superstars. And again, I just think that's more important than him. Uh, going on and winning the championship like straight away. I feel like uh, him really establishing this new family. And you know this new family is going to be compared to the old one. Everyone's going to look at this new family and compare it to the old one. And that's a, that's a high bar, right? That's a real high bar. That's that's a hard act to follow. Um, so uh, it's going to need time and it's going to need a lot of focus. Final one then, the uh, believe it or not, the fifth thing that I think he needs to do, I think I've put a couple of things together here. I think he needs to beat Randy Orton and I think he needs to win at WrestleMania. So ideally beat Randy Orton at WrestleMania, right? So um, I've got an image here of obviously when he got burnt by Randy. Just as a reminder, you know, Randy Orton burnt down the compounds. Um, he broke up the original Wyatt family. Not only did he do that, but he ended Bray's title reign at WrestleMania 33. And then obviously with the more recent run, we saw him burn Bray alive, um, the Fiend alive. Then we got the Fiend come back at WrestleMania 37, only to then lose again. So like, it was stunning. It was absolutely stunning. I don't think anyone predicted Randy was winning at WrestleMania 37. I don't think anyone called it. And, you know, considering the only victory Bray has got at WrestleMania is the Firefly Funhouse match, which let me remind you how wrestling fans reacted to that. This this pretty much is how a lot of people reacted to that match. Like, just, I don't know what I just saw. I don't even know if I can count that as a win for Bray. Like, it was like a fever dream, right? It was just like a fever dream. So uh, he has not got a win that he can really hang his hat on. You know, that that was Titus O'Neil's reaction straight after the match. That's not me just finding a random image. That is, as soon as the Firefly Funhouse match ends at WrestleMania 36, we cut to Titus pulling that reaction. And I feel like that was a lot of people around the world. So, you know, he lost at WrestleMania 30 to Cena. He lost at 31 to The Undertaker. He was at 32 in a segment with The Rock. The Rock beat Rowan in about seven seconds. WrestleMania 33, he loses to Randy Orton. WrestleMania 34, I believe, is when he helps Matt Hardy win the Battle Royal. 
So he's not involved in a match or he, he doesn't have like his own match. I don't believe he's at 35. And then at 36, we get this. And at 37, he loses. So I feel like he really needs a win at WrestleMania at some point. And I'm sure it will come. Um, but he needs a win at WrestleMania and he needs to get a victory over Randy. I feel like um, him and Alexa, you could definitely look at that and say he needs revenge against Alexa. But the last time we saw Bray before he left was an episode of The Fun House where he was talking about new friends, new beginnings, and seemingly he was ready to move on. And seemingly he wasn't bearing a grudge. He didn't hold anything against Alexa. He seemed quite positive and happy, and he was ready to move on to something different. A lot of people... Uh, looking at that saying maybe he knew that he was about to leave WWE and that was him saying, I'm ready to move on. I don't think he did, to be honest. I think he genuinely was moving on to a different feud and then it just so turned out that uh, he got released. Um, so, yeah, I, I think Alexa, you can't really ignore it. There needs to be something that happens there, but I don't think he needs a match with her, for example, uh, or anything like that. Uh, plus, also, she seems to be in a very different place now to where she was then. So, you know, that's different. Um, but Randy, the, there's unfinished business there. So WrestleMania and Randy Orton, I feel like he really does need uh, to get some uh, closure. Let's put it that way um, on that chapter. And that's it. That's everything. So Bray Wyatt is back. Those things are five things that I think are way more important that Bray needs to focus on rather than go after this carry and cross or go after uh, a title or do this person or go after that person. Like, I, I think those five things are way more important. But I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments below. I know this was a long video, but I wanted to make sure that I probably probably uh, like explained everything and went through everything. And um, as I said, this is a big subject and it's one that I know people are really engaged with. So I thought it'd be fun to spend some time on it. So uh, big thank you to everyone that's uh, watched this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. As I said, leave your thoughts below. Uh, I do go through and uh, read the comments. Um, and so, yeah, really appreciate the support. And as we said, at the time of uploading this, it is the day before SmackDown. We should hopefully get some big, big answers in uh, around 24 hours time. So let's see what that brings. Awesome, guys. Thanks for watching. And I will see you again next time. Bye for now.